All righty, everyone. Welcome to Homecoming Week. Uh, we'll make sure that this meeting is efficient, an hour max. Uh, but let's begin. Um, I call this meeting to order on November 10th, 2021 at 5.32 p.m. Again, people that are joining us here in person, make sure that you speak clearly, slowly, and directly into the mic for more ac accurate captions. And of course, if you're tuning in via Teams um, to have live captions, just press the three dots um, for those to begin. Um, yay, it's November. Um, if Secretary Schulte can start roll call. <laughs> Senator Shiloh? Here. Senator Brown? Senator McDowell? Senator Allen? Here. Senator Lee? Senator Banerjee? Here. Senator Castellanos? Here. Senator Gillis? Here. Senator Guevara? Here. Senator Johnson? Here. Senator McFarland? Here. Senator Mosley? Senator Van Boris? Senator M? Here. Senator Cowell? Here. Senator Schulte? Here. Senator Quibentoro? Here. All right, we have quorum present. Awesome. All righty, so this is a sponsorship. So if you have not voted yet, please vote for Bella. She's representing us for the Student Government Association. So go to OrgSync main page or click the link in our bios on so every platform on social media. Um, first thing. And yeah, hey, Bella, everyone. <laughs> All righty, so today's agenda. So we have some guest speakers. We also have college reports, approval of minutes for new business. We have F2021 B3. We also have consideration of a Supreme Court appointment. Um, you have Senate committee appointments, and I'll talk about center of the session, of course, announcements and adjournment. Um, today, we're going to have um, the vice um, provost for academic uh, resources, um, Jennifer Stevenson. We also have the Assistant Vice President for Student Financial Services, Chris Foster. I'm going to, the floor is all yours. Let me get the screen going. And they're tuning in via Teams. Um, and the floor is all yours. Okay, give me just one second. I will get our slides going. Let me know when you change the settings to get y'all to have. Um, I think, yeah. There we go. And also, okay. thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. I'm going to kick it off, guys. Um, so good afternoon, everyone, or actually good evening now. Um, I want to thank you all for uh, welcoming Chris Foster and I to come meet with you today. So we're going to come to you with a uh, proposed tuition increase that um, we're bringing to our board. So uh, Chris, if you can go to the next slide. So today I want to uh, we want to share with you our goals, priorities and our proposals for uh, undergraduate board designated tuition, graduate board designated tuition and our uh, implementation or proposal for non-resident incremental designated tuition. Next slide, please, Chris. 
Right. So um, UNT is recognized as an innovative, affordable public research university, and we are ranked as a tier one research university and have 88 of our programs ranked in the top 100. We are also named um, and recognized as an affordable public research university and have been named as America's 100 best college buys for 25 consecutive years, um, named as America's best value college by Forbes and ranked 25th uh, best 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 bang for the buck in the South by Washington Monthly. And being able to be recognized for these prestigious awards and recognition could not have been achieved without our commitment to our goals and priorities. And so if you can see you. And our commitment to our students is uh, one to create a supportive learning environment and has been one of our main goals at UNT. And just this year, we've expanded our resources uh, available to our students by investing in additional staff in the math lab and writing centers. Um, we've providing more need-based scholarships by increasing the resources available and improving our student pathways to degree completion. Next slide, please. And we would not have been able to fulfill on our commitments to our students without the talented people within our institution. So by attracting and retaining our top talent, we can continue to increase the number of faculty to help maintain healthy student to teacher ratios in our classroom. Uh, we can continue investment into our academic programs. And just this fall, we were able to launch eight new innovative degree programs across a variety of fields. As a designated Hispanic servicing institute, we are committed to also servicing our underrepresented and underserved uh, communities. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, to tie this all together, our scholarly activities and innovation is recognized through our advancement in research, impactful collaborations, and support of our scholars. We can continue to engage our students in a, re uh, in a rich research experience, uh, continue our collaborations in a meaningful partnerships with uh, corporate entities to expand learning and growth opportunities for our students. And then we can continue to support and highlight the successes of our UNT scholars, such as our school uh, Fulbright scholars. And with that, I'll turn it over to Chris to um, continue the presentation. Chris. OK, so we want to talk a little bit about uh, how what we have done to get from where we were to where we're going with a tuition increase. So uh, several things that the university has done to avoid having to increase tuition. Um, we are constantly looking to improve our operational efficiencies, whether that is in our, our facilities area, whether that's in you know, classroom space, uh, IT utilization, um, even services such as, you know, financial aid and student financial services. We're also, we've made it through budget reductions, reallocations. Again, we are constantly looking um, how to stretch every dollar uh, as thin as we possibly can to ensure that we remain as affordable as possible for all of our students at UNT. Um, however, uh, as we continue to grow, as we identify new needs, emerging needs, um, we are constantly trying to uh, prepare and, and fund resources for student services, such as the Career Center, uh, resources for our academic programs, growing our, our academic programs, creating new academic programs, like Jennifer mentioned. Um, as I think you, you all know, we all know, um, we are faced with inflationary price increases. Um, I think we all are on a personal level, but the university is also um, seeing that in the form of utilities, in the form of supplies, um, food that's offered by dining services across the board. So we are bringing uh, information to you today about a proposed tuition increase uh, that would take effect uh, fall 2022. Uh, this is going to be presented to the UNT System Board of Regents at their next meeting. First one is undergraduate, so um, I'll, I'll take a step back and explain to you. We have board designated tuition and there are different rates based on whether it's undergraduate or graduate students, uh, because as we know that the cost of those degrees, the cost of teaching those classes is different and we want to make sure that when we establish a rate um, such as undergraduate, we charge that to undergraduate students because that's the cost of the degrees that we're offering, whereas a graduate degree 
uh, is typically more expensive and we want to make sure that that cost is is paid for by graduates. So first what I want to talk to you today about is um, undergraduate. Many of you may know uh, UNT has held board designated tuition for undergraduate students at the same rate since fall 2017. Um, it is currently $230 and 11 cents. Um, that rate was part of a four year tuition increase. Um, and so although it was effective in fall 2017, it was really planned four or five years ahead of them. So the increase that we're proposing is $5.89 per semester credit hour, making the hourly rate $236. So one of the things that I want to point out is UNT across the board, we're looking at how we can make uh, tuition planning, tuition rates, all of the fees that, that each student pays. We want to promote simplicity where we possibly can. Um, and so what you'll notice when I say that our proposed rate is it's increasing by $5.89, but the rate that we're going to is $236. So no change. We want to make the rates across the board as simple as we possibly can. And this is a first step in that direction. With this increase, we believe that we will continue to remain affordable compared with peer institutions in Texas. Um, there are other institutions that um, are, are planning tuition increases similar to UNT. We believe that our increase is, is very modest and will keep us affordable. As always, um, anytime we raise board designated tuition, uh, that increases the amount of funding that goes into need based financial aid programs. So currently UNT takes 15% of every dollar collected under board designated tuition, and that revenue generates financial aid programs that are administered by student financial aid and scholarships. And again, like I just mentioned, um, no change at the end of the hourly rates. Um, we want to use that as a way to promote simplicity. Um, okay. So the next piece is for graduate students. So beginning in fall 2022, we're proposing an increase to the current or designated tuition for graduate students rate, $10.21 per semester credit hour to $238 per hour. So again, we're wanting to make sure that although we do need to increase the rates, when we do that, um, we are ending with a, a round number, a number that doesn't have cents at the end um, to make it as simple as possible. Again, with this increase uh, based on our history of holding board designated tuition for graduate students constant from 2013 to 2019, we will still remain affordable, um, but this will provide. Funding that is urgently needed to grow and continue to defray increasing operational costs within our graduate programs. Just like with undergraduate students, um, this board designated tuition, a portion of that 15% is set aside, given to the financial aid office, and that helps UNT offer need based financial aid programs for students. Um, for any student who graduate student who is receiving the tuition benefit program dollars, the TBP awards will be adjusted based on the proposed rate increase. So the third piece that we are proposing um, is called non-resident incremental designated tuition. This rate would be assessed to all non-resident undergraduate and graduate students per credit hour in addition to board designated tuition. So all of the revenue that we, we generate by this tuition item will support efforts to increase graduation rates through key student services such as advising, career support. Uh, many, many of you may have uh, heard recently about the president's career initiative, which will place career advisors within each college and increase those services to help students connect with internships, connect with career support, um, and have that job secured when they graduate. We're also needing to hire additional faculty. With this rate, uh, and I'll show you that in just a moment, but with this rate that we are introducing for a non-resident incremental designated tuition, 
UNT would still be the lowest across all Texas institutions who are charging a similar rate by far. Uh, again, just a visual um, about some of the needs, some of the, the areas that we need to fund with these with this revenue. Uh, advising and career support, we're focusing on student learning outcomes, uh, maintain a healthy faculty to student ratio, hiring more faculty and student support staff, enhance our facilities and classrooms, and ultimately defray growing costs. At the, at the end of the day, the university um, is facing increased costs across the board, um, and we're wanting to do everything we can to mitigate those, but uh, a modest tuition increase is, is necessary. So what we're proposing for the non-resident incremental designated rate is starting in fall 2022, a rate of $20 per semester credit hour. Again, even with that added, UNT is still very considered very affordable for this population uh, compared to all other of our peer institutions in Texas who also have a non-resident incremental designated rate. Okay. So we are at the portion of our presentation where Jennifer and I can entertain any questions. One thing that I want to mention, um, you may not have all of the questions that you would like to ask here. Um, if you do, we'll certainly answer them tonight, but I want everybody to take note of the email address at the bottom of the screen, tuition.hearing at unt.edu. That email address, you are welcome to share. You are welcome uh, to send any questions that you, you know, think of after this, this session, uh, and Jennifer and I will get you answers there. So I'm going to take down the presentation really quick, and um, Devin and David, we are open to questions. All righty. Um, do we have any questions? Uh, Senator Johnson, go ahead. So this has been uh, a talk. Uh, one of my constituents actually approached me during my office hours and they uh, she is actually going to have to if again, if she doesn't get the scholarships or loans, she will have to drop out should uh, when the undergraduate tuition increase happens. So my question is, is there a grandfather clause to where current uh, students who are maybe sophomore or higher or freshmen or higher will be able to not pay the tuition increase and then the new incoming freshmen will be or class UNT prospective students that can then pay this or is it just if you're you at UNT, it's going to change no matter what? So good, good question, Senator Johnson. Um, so basically the, the rate increases that we're proposing that would take effect for, for any student who is on the traditional tuition plan. So that would exclude students who have opted in to the savings or tuition plan prior to fall 2022. Also, there are some students who are still uh, participating in the Eagle Express tuition plan uh, before it is officially sunset. So as, as many of you, some of you may know, um, the Eagle Express program was officially closed to new students um, a few years ago. However, all students in that program have at least four academic years. So students in that program will continue to have the rates that they locked in when they chose the plan and students who chose the save and soar tuition plan uh, during the last two years would also um, have a locked in rate. And Thank also, you. so and Senator Johnson, if, if, if I might follow up, um, you mentioned that you had a constituent who um, had had questions or concerns about not receiving uh, financial aid. Um, you're no, well no, no, no. I said okay. if again, if they get approved again for like scholarships like that gotcha. going into the future, not now. I'm just okay. saying in the future. But OK, so okay. then I have another follow up question. So one of the biggest things, and I actually agree with this, is that the hiring and retaining uh, UNT staff slash employees or whatever. Um, my question is, how high of a priority is that? So this sounds like the tuition is going to be increased either way, and you're just letting us know that this is going to happen. What is the the 
the ranking of terms of if this tuition again, if this tuition is going forth, how much of it in the terms of time would be for the staff uh, or faculty concerns? We want to keep them. We need more. We need more people kind of thing. So um, I can chime in on the faculty side. So for faculty hiring, we actually do plan that out a, a year in advance. Um, it takes a while for us to um, recruit and post and advertise for these positions. So as we're seeing high growth in certain academic programs, we are already um, on the path of looking and investing in those resources because we want to make sure that the faculty to student ratios within the classrooms are appropriate and that you guys have the sections that are needed to advance within your degree degree program. Um, with that, we try to limit the way that or um, be very thoughtful in the way that we increase and invest in our staffing resources. So where we can, we try to utilize the current resources or current staff um, within the uh, workloads that they currently have. But you know, as you can imagine, as student population increases, as the um, instructional and sections and all that increases, there are some um, meaningful investments that we do have to make to make sure that those staffing resources are appropriately allocated. But we do that once we get to that point as well so that we're not overextending ourselves. All right, awesome. Senator Schulte, go ahead. Hello. Um, so, and maybe I am just asking a repeat question from your slides, but I just wanted to be very clear on this. <laughs> Sorry, my mic died. Um, why do we need to have this tuition increase? And can you be like as specific as possible? So I think it was on one of your one of the slides, but it was kind of vague. It just kind of said like faculty learning resources, like what like what learning resources, like what type of faculty do we need to hire? Trish, do you want me to chime in? Yeah, I was going to say if you want to chime in about faculty, then I can take the, the yeah, so. I will say a lot of our, um, we try to maintain the specific amount of student ratios within our class sections, um, but we only have so many faculty around to be able to teach those courses. And for us to maintain some of our accreditation standards, we have to maintain a certain level of uh, ranking of faculty to, make, uh, to be able to meet those standards. So for example, in the College of Business, we have to have a certain level of say tenure, tenure track uh, faculty to be able to uh, provide instruction for a specific number of sections or uh, semester credit hours versus saying um, having a lot of uh, adjuncts or um, lecturer or clinical lines, uh, faculty lines, and being able to provide that instruction. So we're trying to do a healthy mix to make sure that there is um, the uh, the appropriate uh, ranking of faculty to be able to cover those sections. So that takes a lot of planning and making sure that as we're seeing certain um, growth happening in certain academic programs that we are investing those resources there. And Chris, did you want to take into the other pieces? So and, and the same thing goes for on, on the staff side. So when, when you take initiatives like like what we're planning with the Career Center, um, adding I think it's uh, 16 new career advisors on top of what we already have, but making sure that every college has career advisors in house to to work directly with students. So that's an example of where we need to add additional staff resources beyond what we have today. Uh, but then we also have examples where we, we have classrooms that need to be modernized. We have technology needs that need to be addressed. So uh, this tuition increase, UNT has held off on increasing tuition uh, at the undergraduate level for four years. Um, we, we've frankly held off as, as long as we can um, and we need a small tuition increase just to continue the current services that we're providing in many areas. All righty, um, let's do Senator M. Hello, um, quick question. So I might have missed it. Hello, is this working? OK, there we go. Um, good question. I might have missed this, but I have a question that is why exactly is the graduate um, tuition like double like inc the increase is doubled from the undergraduate? Is there a specific, specific reason like is there more needs in the graduate like um, like school that needs more like funding or yeah. 
So to answer your question, our graduate student, the cost in um, teaching those that student population is actually almost, um, I think almost double, if not more, um, just to invest in those resources. Because we try to keep those sections pretty uh, small and there's a lot of more one-on-one -on -one interaction with faculty. And so of course that's gonna take a lot more resources. So they're more, more resource, resource intensive. intensive. All right, thank you very much. Um, Senator Gillis. So real quick question for y'all, and I apologize if um, you've already clarified this, but uh, I think Vice President Foster, you mentioned there was like a, you know, a whole. My mic. Oh, OK, we're good. <laughs> uh, like a whole list of things um, that do need to be, you know, like hiring more faculty, uh, you know, modernizing classrooms and things like that. So um, with the increase in tuition, is there any priority in where the funding is going? Um, like, are we prioritizing, you know, hiring tea over you know, modernizing our classrooms, whatever. Is there any priority necessarily to that increase in the tuition to the increased amount of funds that we're getting from that? So one thing about tuition is is we have multiple priorities that we have to consider that really at the same time. Overall, UNT's focus will continue to be on making sure that we provide the best academic experience for our students. Um, we do need to, as Jennifer mentioned, we do need to make sure that our uh, student to faculty ratios have a healthy balance. Uh, we also have you know, the initiative like the Career Center um, that we, we want to put forth because we know it has a direct impact on our, our students' lives. So with this tuition increase, we have multiple priorities that we're doing everything we can to stretch the dollars that we already have plus the resources that we will be getting through the tuition increase to really maximize what we're able to deliver to our students. So, uh, you know, at, at this point, I, I don't have a, you know, one, two, three, four ranking, um, but what I, I will assure you is that we are doing everything we can to bring as many resources and as many opportunities to our students as we possibly can. All righty, Senator Johnson, I'll get you Rose next. So I do understand that the transportation department is an auxiliary service and they make their uh, whatever budget from what they purchase, what they um, sell or provide. Will anything from the tuition increase to go in any way go to help fund uh, the transportation department for more parking spots for students or any way or is this basically to improve faculty and teaching materials and other stuff like that around campus. So so in general, you are correct. The the parking and transportation office is is funded based on parking permits, ticket sales. Um, at this time, you know, the, the tuition increase is not planned to directly support parking spaces. Uh, but again, there may be other impacts that the tuition increase is able to help offset. So uh, no, it does not directly impact the parking office. Uh, we're, we're focusing on the tuition increase to be able to help our student support, help our faculty uh, to student ratios, help all of our academic pro programs. So no, so no funding of the tuition increase will be going to the transportation department? At this time, I do not believe so. Thank you. Um, Rose, go ahead. And all right. Hello. Um, thank you for speaking with us today. My question to you guys is: Is this the lowest tuition increase that you can possibly make? That takes care of all of your aims of faculty issues and whatever you believe the university needs. Because to my understanding, um, it seems like you have this plan to simplify uh, paying tuition because you want to make it a whole dollar amount. So no sense um, when we pay our tuition. So I'm just curious as to whether you're maybe making this tuition increase a little more expensive than it needs to be in order to get that whole dollar amount. 
Thank you. Thank you for asking that question. Um, so with the increase that we're proposing, we're actually rounding down um, this year. So one of the things that we want to make sure, like you said, is that we are uh, rounding to whole dollars, but we're making sure that we're not rounding up. So for instance, um, the undergraduate tuition increase, the need was roughly 2.6% was what we needed. Um, $5.89 is 2.54%. So in order to get to the $236, we actually rounded down um, from the amount that we needed. In, in answer to, to the previous question um, about, is this the lowest increase that we need? Yes, we, we've, we have really maxed all of the resources that we can um, prior to bringing a tuition increase forward. We, we focus on trying to make UNT affordable. We know that every single dollar counts. Um, we, we've all been students ourselves in the past. Um, so we are bringing the lowest tuition increase that we possibly can that will help us continue to offer the services um, both in the classroom and beyond the classroom. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alrighty, thank you so much, Mr. Foster, and Ms. Stevenson, for taking time out of your day to um, talk to us. Um, by any chance, can we get um, the presentation sent to us uh, by any chance? Absolutely. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you Have everybody for your day. time. Thank you. All righty. Um, Senator Schulte. Senator Schulte um, moves to uh, let F 2021 B3 be moved ahead of the college reports. Is there a second? All right. Anyone object? All right. It's moved. Let's consider uh, F 2021 B3. Let, let the interns drop a G. Um, it was submitted by JT, uh, of course, with Devin and Casey. Um, here is a graphic that the um, team created. Let me get that. All right, well, how's it going, Senate? I hope y'all having fun. Like I always say, I really do mean that. I hope y'all having fun in this. Um, but today the interns are coming to you today to ask for some money for an event that they've been working very hard upon. And so I also want them to get this experience to be able to come up here and I want them to read the bill. They're gonna read the bill today and they also will be helping with questions. So I'm just kind of like here, but I'm not here. Um, this kind of their practice. So who are gonna be the three volunteers? Okay, who else? Two more. Okay, don't be shy now. Don't be scared. Who else? I need one more. Justin. Yeah, come on, Justin. Yeah, Justin. Okay. Wait on the build up a little. All right, F2021 B3, let the interns drop a G. Background, the Student Government Association Intern Program plans on putting a fall event on November 30th to close out the fall semester for the first year students and anyone else that wants to attend. The event is designed to provide a welcome and celebratory space for students to close out their fall 2021 semester. There will be marshmallows, sugar cookie decorating, and other similar food-based activities which require funding. The planning for this event has been a long-term process resulting in a tangible benefit to the student body and training for the intern program on event planning and design. The Senate is empowered to confirm, deny, or modify purchases of the association over $400 in accordance with 
Article 5, yes, Section 8, Subsection B of the Constitution. Let it be resolved that the Student Senate hereby author authorizes expenditures up to and including $1,000 from the FY22 SGA budget line item intern programs under the intern program director's budget for the fall 2021 entered program event on November 30th. Let it further be resolved that remaining funds as approved by the Senate and which is not spent on the planned event shall be re <clears throat> reallocated into the FY 2020 2022 SGA budget intern program line item. Oh, respectfully submitted Devin Skinner, Jermaine JT Turner and Casey Jimenez. Do you have any, are they going to motion to move? Uh, oh, no, anything, gonna, anything else you need to add or we good? Um, yeah, are they going to question this or no? Yeah. Well, before we move to any motions, I want to say interns, I love the initiative. Yay. All right, is there any motions on the floor? Senator Johnson? I move that we go to a period of questioning. Is there a second? Senator Cowell, second. All right, Senator Johnson, we're now in a period of questioning. You have the first question. So obviously you'll have marshmallows already and I'm already ready to fund just that. So my question is, what is the overall, I'm a little confused on the overall amount y'all want. So we're only asking for a thousand dollars because any, um, any amount of money we want to use from our budget over $400, we have to ask the Senate to vote on first. So this does not mean that we are going to use the full $1,000. This just means that we have up until that limit to buy whatever we find necessary for the event. Thank you so much. <laughs> Senator Cal. Okay, I don't know if anybody has this handy, but um, how much money total did we uh, give the intern program? Like, is this, like what I percentage? I can provide that amount. Oh. I believe it's five thousand dollars for the year, um, twenty five hundred for each semester, if I'm not mistaken. But okay, that that was my question. Oh, it's more than that. Um, Senator Allen, just out of curiosity, where do y'all plan on holding this event? Do you like have any like? Oh, okay. Uh, what do you ex like? How many students do you expect? expect to come like um i believe we're what we said about 150 to 200 students will uh, are planning to come and then we are also planning to hold it in the emerald ballroom okay thank you any other questions all right all right senator johnson not so much a question but i am ready to move into a period of voting um, that is out of order since this oh. is not placed under emergency status. That's um, my bad. So are there no other questions? Uh, Senator Cal? Uh, Senator Cal moves to create a discussion. Um, that is also out of order since this is not placed under emergency status. If there's no other questions, we'll move on to our next um, out of the agenda. Um, unless you don't need to add anything. Go ahead, JT. Or okay. This is, hold on. I think case is going to come down real quick. Good job, interns. Um, am I in order to speak? Okay. Um, um, the president does say that purchase proposals are um, a one week um, submission. Although it is submitted as a bill, um, I'll leave the Senate up for interpretation on that. But um, yeah. Point of information, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Can we just put this in emergency status and vote on it today? You can. Um, if that's something that y'all believe is, should be voted immediately. Um, the Senate has that right. Senator Johnson. Uh, just real quick, are the interns okay if we vote on it to get this approved now? Yes, we're ready to work. Oh, yeah. Isn't that right, interns? We've yeah. been ready to work. Then I move that we put what uh, let the interns drop a G into emergency status. Is there a second? Senator Gillis seconds. Does anyone object? All right. 
It is now placed under emergency status. Um, there can be any vote or any motions. Senator M. Okay, I move to a period of voting. Senator Johnson seconds. Does anyone object to a period of voting? All right, awesome. I did not have, oh, actually I do. Senator Schulte, if you can start roll call voting. Senator Shiloh? Aye. Senator Allen? Aye. Senator Banerjee? Aye. Senator Castellanos? Aye. Senator Gillis? Aye. Senator Guevara? Aye. Senator Johnson? Aye. Senator McFarlane? Aye. Senator M? Aye. Senator Cowell? Aye. aye. Senator Schulte? Aye. And Senator Quibentoro? Aye. All right. It seems all votes are from the affirmative. F2021, F3, let the interns drop a G. Passes. Thanks, Senator. Thank you so much, interns. Senator Schulte? Senator Schulte moves uh, to bring forward the Supreme Court. Senator Schulte moves to bring forward the appointment. Is there a second to moving up our Supreme Court consideration? Senator Johnson seconds. All right. Does anyone object? All right, not. All right, awesome. Um, now we'll, let me make that, all righty, um, before we consider our Supreme Court, um, appointment, I believe there is no conflict of interest that the executive branch founded, um, and then Casey, you can correct me if I was wrong. No. All right. Awesome. So. We have our nominee here via uh, Teams. Um, I'm going to spotlight this. Oziyama, was that correct? Did I pronounce it correct? Almost. Oziyama. Yeah. Oziyama. All right. You have the floor. Um, tell the Senate, essentially, you have the floor to tell the Senate why you believe you'll be a great um, candidate for the court. All right, hi. It's so nice to be in you guys' midst. I um, know it was kind of a time difference, but um, yes, I'm Oziyama Zemwa. And just to give you a little background on who I am, um, I'm a junior here at UNT. I just turned 21, so who did that? Um, and I um, believe that I would be a great candidate for SGA because being on this campus as a student here, undergraduate student, not graduate, of course, I've seen, so, I've interacted and seen so much of what the student body has to offer each other and what they have to offer themselves. And what I've mostly noticed from a lot of the organizations and groups who I've spoken to, mostly women and people of color, is that sometimes uh, um, just tends to be who I gravitate to or who I talk to, but or who I'm around. I noticed that there are, they don't feel like they have anyone to advocate for them or specifically as if even if they wanted to advocate for themselves, they don't know where to go or what to do. And being in my story in the position that I've held as um, morals and ethics chair and as our representative in the entire MGC council, I represent and advocate for a lot of our sisters. And I think to myself, these are people that I know and who I've talked to. And, you know, if they're feeling this way, then several other students are feeling this way as well and I can be that person I can be that advocate for them and I think and I believe that that is something I would like to do that I want to do that I'm passionate about because why shouldn't everybody have the chance to speak on issues or things that are concerning them especially on this campus just my little spiel all right thank you so much mm -hmm. um Senator Schulte go ahead just for the record um I was doing my tabling um, when Ozioma came up to me um, and I was able to explain. I was able to explain um, Supreme Court to her um, and kind of get to talk to her and like 
write her email down um, and things like that. Um, so just for conflict of interest purposes, just wanted to say that. I don't think there's a conflict of interest, but Oziyama did um, talk to Gracie. So we appreciate our tabling efforts for outreach. Um, Senator Gillis, any um, motions on the floor? Yeah, um, I uh, move that we go to a period of questioning. Is there a second? Senator Johnson seconds. Awesome. Now we're in a period of questioning. Senator Gillis, you have the first question. Oh, gosh. Okay, it's working. Hi, Oziyama. Uh, thank you so much for being with us here tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, I know this can be a little nerve wracking. Um, so thank you so much. Um, I guess my question is just to get to know kind of who you are and what you stand for a little bit. Um, what does your uh, campus involvement kind of look like now? I know you mentioned your sorority. Um, so mm -hmm. I guess uh, what all are you kind of involved in here um, on campus? Okay, I am a member of Alpha Lambda, Dam Alpha Lambda Delta, excuse me, uh, National Honor Society, and we're kind of getting back on campus. A lot of our members fell off because of COVID, so it's been a bit of a wreck, but we are starting to do some of that, that stuff with getting back on campus. And mostly with such um, the organization being kind of built back again, we're still very in the early stages. I'm more so a member and I participate in our events and help um, if they need any um, resources with putting things together. And as I mentioned before, I am a sister of Sigma Lambda Gamma and I have occupied or I'm in currently in one of the two positions now as our morals and ethics chair. And what a little bit about that is I ensure that our sisters are following the rules and regulations. And if they are not, I will bring it up to our SEC board and advocate on that's just on. Um, well, not necessarily advocate, but more so I don't like to say take punitive action, but essentially that is what I will do and ensure that the proper repercussion is being dealt out. But I also um, deal with revising our, our bylaws. We've noticed that this semester with coming back online, off of off of offline, excuse me, that there's been some trouble with certain requirements and what's expected of sisters. And then I was our um, MGC delegate for our entire council. So basically another part of that would be I would go to weekly meetings, take notes, ensure that if there were certain events on different days, um, you know, we could collab with that organization or completely cancel it. It was more so like uh, just very much so collaboration with other fraternities and sororities and ensuring that you know we weren't stepping on each other's toes. And I also am a part of NSO, the Nigerian Student Association organization, excuse me. And what that really is, it's more so personal for me because being a Nigerian American student, I always felt like, am I too American or am I like, you know, not Nigerian enough? So I think that's a way for me to interact with different types of Nigerians because, you know, our country has over 3,000 languages, different tribes. So it's more a way for me to connect with myself while connecting with other people. And that's just a little bit about how I'm involved on campus. Thank you so much. All righty, Senator Johnson. I kind of have uh, just two questions. One, uh, I might have missed this. What is your major? I'm a history major with a minor in Spanish. Very, very cool. Uh, and then my second question is, have you looked over the Constitution, any of the SGA Constitution? I have, but I am still getting familiar with it. It is much longer than our SLG Constitution <laughs> for sure, but I am, I have looked over it. I'm definitely still getting familiar with it. Thank you so much. Any other questions or motions? Senator Johnson? A motion, I'm sorry. I move that we go to a period of closed discussion. Is there a second? Or we can go, or we can do something else. Senator Banerjee second. All right. Um, Oziyama, since it's been moved and seconded that we're in a closed discussion. Um, Devin, can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, I think it's me. Man, you and T's quiet. Hold on. <laughs> I'm glad that one's on the record because, yeah. Okay, Devin, are you there? We good? You oh, no. No, we're not. Uh, I'm David. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, you're, no, you're totally good. I was, it was Can hearing in and out, and like it's lagging on my end. So, um, I'm sorry, where were we at? I'm listening. <laughs> so it's been moved and seconded that we're going to be in a period of closed discussion. Okay. Um, I'm going to see if you have 
Hopefully I can do this. Um, I can move you to a different room. Um, if you have, just depends on, I guess. I'm gonna move you to a separate room. I hope. Okay. He signed more people. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's weird. Damn. Would you prefer if I just like log out and then log oh, back? Oh, no, ah. I got it. Okay. It says you're going to be in room go. two. Okay. Um, don't know, do not know if that's. Okay. Okay, that's We're not... both with her. Mr. Speaker, if I may, uh, I think you have to click on open to actually send them into the room. Okay. Because you just assigned them. Alrighty, it's opening the rooms. This is a new feature that we're doing now. Breakout rooms. Um, okay, let me go to. Yeah. I'm like, this is so hard. Can oh, there you go. Awesome. So, um. I don't think Oziyama's in this room. We're in the same room, David. No. Oh, we're good? Yeah. Okay. So we're now in a period of closed discussion. Um, Senator Johnson, I believe you made the motion. Go ahead and make your discussion point. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I like them a lot. They seem like a very passionate person, wanted to bring about change, especially as, if it's the best of my recollection. This is the first Supreme Court justice uh, appointment appointee uh, saying that they want to actually change the bylaws because we're having problems with the bylaws. So I'm a huge fan of her. So just wanted to know that was kind of my take on it. All right. Um, Senator Banerjee. Yeah, I definitely think that they show a lot of like promise in their history as, I guess, moral and ethics director, chair, whatever it is for their yeah. sorority. Yeah. Um, because they mentioned wanting to advocate for, or just happening to um, hear a lot from women and people of color, but also being able to maintain that neutrality in a position like that. So I, I think it's very promising. Um, yeah. It and, seems like y'all have made your decision. Yeah. If we um, can move. someone move to a period of voting? Or Senator Kell? Sorry, I was just going to ask, do we know the candidate's pronouns? I can pull them up. She, her, hers. Um, Senator Schulte. Senator Schulte moves to a period of voting. Senator Johnson seconds. All righty. Um, anyone object? Nope. We're in a period now of voting. Let's do roll call vote. Um, Secretary Schulte, if you can start that for us, that'd be awesome. Senator Shiloh? Aye. Senator Allen? Aye. Senator Banerjee? Aye. Senator Castellanos? Aye. Senator Gillis? Aye. Senator Guevara? Aye. Senator Johnson? Aye. Senator McFarland? Aye. Senator M? Aye. Senator Cowell? Aye. Senator Schulte? Aye. Senator Quiventoro? Aye. All right. Seems like all votes were in the affirmative. The justice appointed to the court. Awesome. Uh, let's try to fix teams. What information, Mr. Speaker? Why are you doing How many more positions do we have for the vacancy for the appointment? I believe we have two more. Two more. Um, Is, is Oziyama here? Um, I believe. Yeah. 
There you are. Awesome. You're back. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I okay. Now I know you're there because before I was like, "What's going on?" I have no idea. Like, what my all righty. Um, Oziyama, congratulations. You were appointed to the court. Um, Devin will reach out to you or Casey about Orc Sync stuff. But congratulations. We'll move on to the next Thank item of the agenda. All righty. Due to time constraints, I'm just going to go to um, Senate Standing Committees. Uh, just want to make sure this is correct um, and ask the Senate to make corrections. Um, so based, I know I wasn't here last week. Is this list correct um, for campus life and environment? Is that all correct to y'all? Diversity inclusion? Yes. Internal Senate Committee? Does that look good? Legislative Affairs Committee. All right, I'm, at, I'm requesting that the Senate um, Remove the following individuals in red. Uh, Senator Schulte, can you? Can I work? Oh. Senator Schulte moves to remove everyone in red from the committee list. Senator Johnson seconds. Does someone object to that? Nope. All right. Motion passes. Um, they are now removed. Um, I was going to let you all know Senator Sanchez Martinez did resign from the Senate. Um, um, but we still have 16 members. Um, yes. Do we need to make any amendments or any appointments to this list? If not, let's continue moving on. Um, Senator Johnson. Senator Johnson nominates uh, Senator Gillis for the Internal Senate Committee. All right, is there a second? Senator Banner, you second. Do you accept this nomination? Yes, I do. All righty. Does anyone oppose? All right, you're on it. Congratulations. Um, any Anything else? Okay, I'm going to move on to the next item on the agenda. Um, just because of time constraints. Awesome, awesome. All righty, center of the session. Um, so you got to know, we elect a center of the session for each sessions in the fall and the spring, not the summer. Um, a little description of this um, kind of honor is a center who has made an impact on the student senate. This person went the extra mile to connect with their constituency and create positive change within their college. So next week, um, you will go through the process of nomination, speeches, questioning um, our nominees, and you will vote on one person to be the senator of the 218th session. Um, Y'all can think about it. Um, we will go, that'll be something in next week's agenda. Um, you will get a plaque, I think, or we'll make a plaque. There's in the office of that. Biggest thing about this honor is this is someone that has really connected and been active outside of SGA and in their college. That's really important for the Senate. Your job is to advocate for your constituency, and this kind of gives that um, honor or title to you for doing that already. That's something that y'all should be um, doing already. And this just kind of says as a group, y'all believe that this person has is amazing and exemplary and sh shows what um, that center that goes to move on look like. Um, up in next week. All righty. Now let's do um, college reports. Um, again, if there's nothing to report, you can just state the following. There's nothing to report. Um, we can make them as fast as possible, just at the time, time constraints. They'll come to the front or whatever. Um, we'll start uh, start off with the College of Education. Um, Senator Shiloh. There is nothing to report. Awesome. The College of Engineering, I believe. Um, Andy, you're here. Do you want? Do you need anything? Anything to report? Sure. Um... 
Can y'all hear me all right? Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so the College of Engineering has been working. We recently met with the dean, but I think we are, we've already talked about that. Um, looking at what the college is going to look like in the future and construction projects and hiring professors. And the College of Engineering is growing. Um, more, more on a smaller scale. Recently, I've, I've, I put in a work order to install a room temperature water fountain for a student who was having, uh, I believe, teeth sensitivities. And that is all. All righty. Honors College, uh, Senator Allen. Honors College has nothing to report at this time. Awesome. And I believe you're also doing for the College of Information? Yes. Okay. So today, Rachel had her first meeting with the Diversity and Inclusion Council, for which she is the student representative. The council has made uh, various, made up of various staff and is meant to advise the dean on how the college can improve. Uh, dean Kinchunk said that he wanted to change the culture of the college. The council came up with having workshops on how to recognize microaggressions for both students and faculty. And Rachel recommended about having a campaign to increase awareness um, about resources on campus where they can report microaggressions and find support since a lot of students aren't aware. And then she also met with the College of Information staff Senator uh, Adam Chavez and Lisa Hollinger, the Assistant Director of Marketing and Outreach at the College of Information Student Appreciation Event. They talked about how Dr. Kinshunk used to have to meet or used to have meet the Dean events and how they've been on standby because of COVID, but they want to bring them back. Uh, Lisa wants her to increase advertising and look into ambassadors for the college. Thank you so much, um, Senator Allen, for delivering um, the college report for the College of Information. Next, we have the uh, College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Grant, go ahead. The College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences has nothing to report. Awesome. College of Music, Senator Beige. Hi, guys. So I attended the College of Music Student Advisory Council uh, I think last week, um, we discussed several issues, including facilities, specifically um, the practice buildings. Currently, the university has no plans to update any of our facilities um, in terms of the practice buildings, Bain Hall and the music annex. Um, we also talked about curriculum and course requirements and considering uh, making opera an MULB classification um, for all our choral students. Currently, I'm working with uh, undergraduate and graduate students to bring blind auditions to UNT. We actually had an informal meeting yesterday. Um, and so our next step is to meet with department heads and the dean to see how receptive faculty will be. Um, we're hoping, well, I'm hoping to introduce legislation on this when we return in the spring um, to create a more diverse uh, community in the College of Music. And other news is concert season. Um, so if you need a mental break, uh, from studying, go check out the events calendar of the College of Music. All our events are free. Um, any questions? No, thank you. Um, College of Merchandising, Hospitality, and Tourism. Senator M, go ahead. So I've been working on my creating a social event for my college, and I reached out to the dean and to Dr. Kutzinger, who is in charge of the leadership academy that I'm part of. And she's already talked. She told me that actually the CMHT's committee, like diversity inclusion, I can't. I'm not probably saying the name right, but there's also already planning on doing a social event too. And so we're, we're planning on. We're currently in the works of planning a movie night next semester for the whole college to enjoy. Awesome. Thank you so much. And um, Con College of Science, Senator Schulte. College of Science has nothing to report. Awesome. Um, lastly, we have um, Texas Academy of Mathematics and Science, Senator Quibentoro. Uh, TAMS has nothing to report, though I would like to ask you all to keep us in your thoughts as we eagerly await our college application decisions. Awesome. All righty. That was concludes um, college reports. Shout outs. Um, I do have a couple shout outs. Um, sorry, I'm like running around like a headless chicken. Um, I just want to say 
to a couple people. Senator Cowell, you're awesome. Thank you for stopping by my office and always chatting with me. I love when I get to talk to y'all. Um, really appreciate our last conversation. And again, it really means a lot to me. Um, Senator Schulte for being awesome. And as well, talking to me, your work never goes un unnoticed. And especially conversations about how can we improve as, as an organization and as a collective group. It really means a lot to me. Your um, really great ideas about how can we be more active when it comes to outreach. Um, and Senator Gillis, congratulations. I wasn't here last week. I just want to congratulate you, giving a shout out for becoming our newly appointed senator. And any other shout out, Senator Gillis? Um, I just want to say a quick shout out to, I know um, Saloni was at the um, dog toy making event today, but shout out to anyone who has attended any of the homecoming events this week, uh, specifically the service events. I was this year's service coordinator, so it means a lot to see people showing up to those. We made 563 dog toys today. All of those will be going to the Denton Animal Shelter. Um, we also that? packaged, I think, um, over 9,000 meals on Monday with Rise Against Hunger. So shout out to everyone who's participated in that. Um, thank you guys so much. Alrighty. Um, announcements um, that I have. Next week is our last Senate meeting. Super important, something I'm gonna highlight. Um, certain legislations, depending on the urgency, will be placed under emergency status. Other things will not. Um, of course, the Senate has the right to actually um, if I do not, oh, do not know who you are. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry. Um, I was going to state that um, if I do not place something under emergency status, you would have to move to amend the agenda during the Senate meeting since I will not place it myself. Um, again, I've told you all a month in advance. Constantly give y'all reminders about certain things about when to make sure to submit it by. So make sure that there will be a smooth process for the Senate to consider not be rushed. Um, but of course, depending on the legislation, if it's really urgent, I will guarantee that. But if I do not, you would have to move to amend the agenda. Um, and then um, our heart to heart conversation will happen next week. Um, I'll make sure our Senate meeting is as efficient as it was today. This is how our Senate meeting should be operating. Um, great job to everyone. Um, but I have announcements about next semester, about how Senate's going to operate. I think it's going to be for the better, more smoother. Um, but you will have to, I hope you can be there um, next week. And then, yeah, but of course, for announcements, um, of course, please help Bella spread the word. Um, Bella has been working super hard. If you don't know her um, campus impact uh, campus um, impact project, is that right? Um, yeah. Is to um, allocate a thousand dollars to the menstrual hygiene initiative, which is something that we we're already doing. That's another extra thousand dollars that can help a lot of students, especially um, non-binary um, and trans students. Um, that is super important. And of course, voting ends tomorrow. So if you haven't cast your vote, please do that. Um, it's all link in our bio for every platform. So Twitter, um, Instagram, Facebook, you can easily, it says vote for Bella, click on it, sign in, cast your vote, and et cetera. Um, announcements? Yes. I have sent the link in the general chat in SGA, so you can vote for homecoming in there. Um, we appreciate everyone here. Uh, as well as we have a holiday party next Friday at 8 o'clock in the president's suite. Please remember, I'm going to be very sad if no one shows up. Uh, I believe that's an apogee, right? No, 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 no. It's no. the union. Union. Yeah, fourth floor of the union. Oh, okay. All righty. I believe that's 7 p.m. today. Coliseum. Yell like hell. Go support orgs. There's nothing else. I adjourn this meeting at 6.41 p.m. Go have fun and enjoy homecoming.